What's going on guys? So hopefully you enjoyed that little edit of what the Bobber was and what it is. Now, now the rest of the video is going to be me, Brian, and Luke sitting down and talking to you guys about the highlights of this season of Wreck Bike Rebuild. But before we got to that, I wanted to let you guys know that the shirt I'm wearing in the video you're about to see, as well as this shirt right here, are part of the collection that Ride Apparel is launching pre-orders for starting today, and you can only order them through next Sunday. After that, pre-orders are done, and you're not gonna be able to buy these shirts anymore. But just wanted to tell you guys, the spring launch for Ride Apparel is now live for a week. And uh, after that, they're gone forever, so grab them while you can. And uh, let's get to the rest of the video. Hope you guys enjoy. Messing around. Wait, hold on. Safety, gentlemen. Safety. What's going on, guys? Welcome to the reveal party. Woo! Really? This lackluster, guys. I'll like, tell you what, Chase. You should be as tired as the rest of us after working on this bike as hard as we did the last three weeks lifetimes. of this project. Oh, weeks, right? Yeah. So, uh, guys, the bike is officially done. You guys Almost. can't see. Yeah. Don't don't look at that. By the time this video comes out, there will be a bolt here, a banjo bolt. Uh, so what's up guys, welcome to the end of the video where you got to see cinematic stuff and we're going to talk about the motorcycle and what we thought about it over the build time episode. Right, right now we're about to uh, voice our gripes about this build. We're going to talk point, about... And point out all the stuff that blood, sweat, and tears went into. There's positives and there's negatives. Yes. So it's not... It's not <laughs> no I'm, not, I'm not that pessimistic. So, uh, guys, the reason we're able to create crazy bikes like this is because of our Patreon page. So you're seeing this after season three. So uh, season four is almost going to start soon. Uh, that's how we're able to do this. People support us over on Patreon, and then we actually give these bikes away to those people. So if you guys want to be one of the first people to know what the next bike is, which is a beep. <laughs> which is a beep uh you can go over and check out the patreon page and support at whatever level you want we absolutely and massively appreciate all the people over on patreon so boys what do we feel about the 2012 v-star 1300 bobber oh <laughs> actually <laughs> I, th wait i forgot to mention like some people might not have seen wreck bike reboard yet because this will have a flashy thumbnail I'm Chase on Two Wheels, this is my buddy Brian, that's my buddy Luke, and all together we make this thing happen. So if you don't know any of that, you should watch the beginning of this show, because 
why are you starting on this episode? When we came into this build, I'm typically a naked ease sport bike type guy. You had seen and knew about bobbers, right? You had an idea. I didn't even know what the hell the bobber was. Yeah, I mean, you know, my my knowledge of it is, uh, you know, bobbers are just motorcycles stripped down to the right. bare minimum. Right, so Luke, what coming into this season, before we did all our like prep research, where were you at with bobbers? Like, did you have you, you'd probably seen them. Yeah, I mean, I've seen a couple. Like, okay. um, when I went out to California, I read the Triumph bobber. Right, Triumph has the bobber, so you just read it. So like, we're all looking at real minimum level of what a bobber was. Yeah. I feel like with that level of experience, we ended up with a pretty cool product. I do. I, I'm not sure if this is uh, actually going to fit into the bobber frame as some people look at it. Okay. Um, but in in my general sense of what a bobber should be, we hit the nail on the head. Yeah, I think it, uh, regardless of whatever the hell the definition of a bobber is, I think the bike ended up looking really cool. Did that battery die already? You know what that was, guys? It was the spirit of the bobber. That was a really big battery that died that fast. Let there be light and screw you, uh, ghost of the ZX-10. We'll never forget you. Brian, what's your favorite part about the bobber as it is right now? That's really, really hard. There's, I don't care how hard there's, uh, there's so much stuff that we've, so much stuff that we've done to this bike over the course of the build. I'm gonna have to say, personally, my favorite part of the whole build is stripping all of the junk off of the engine. Right. We should probably clarify and let you guys know that haven't seen the season. This is what the bike started out as. It was huge, red, and barely ran. Or maroon. Huge, red, and wrecked. Huge, red, and wrecked. Awesome. So yeah, that's what the bike started out as, and here's a glory shot of what the bike looks like now. So we've gone through a pretty big transformation. So your favorite part was just the stripping away of, of all I mean, the of all the stuff? I mean, it, into the final product of the machine. Right. The part that stands out most to me yeah. um, is the mechanical part of it. You know, so seeing, when you say mechanical seeing all the all the mechanicals very simplified and oh, not okay. not covered or not gussied up or right. you know, there's we took all the chrome off, we took all the covers off. It's just engine. Right. I'm kinda in the same boat where uh, it was the episode that we put the exhaust on. Not the ones where we wrapped them, but like got the black ones on. It was like in the middle of something and we just stuck the exhaust on there. And the way, like, there was a moment that like clicked when the exhaust just kind of disappeared into the blackness of the engine where I was like, oh shit. Like, that was, that was a pretty big moment that uh, I remember specifically. Luke, you have a moment of the season that was like, Holy shit. It's probably the last episode when, it, <laughs> when it's, it's just, it's, yeah, like the, you know, it's not like how do we make this work and how do we make this work and then, you know, things are interfering with each other. Right. And for you guys that don't know, Luke is focused on like ordering parts for us, making sure we get the right parts. So you have a lot of stress on you, especially with like the Moto Gadget stuff. Absolutely. Because pretty much everything we put on it is, you know, universal tagged. It's not... That is the, if you guys are ordering parts for bikes and you see like universal fit, just. Be ready. Be ready. Be Especially ready. Especially if you're doing something big like we did because, uh, I mean, to be fair, universal fit is is accurate, right? Yeah. But it's the work that involves to make it fit that I think ended up causing a lot of trouble for our situation. This build has been really challenging for all three of us. Even with Brian being a professional mechanic, like we've all had some like serious challenges with this thing. It was stressful. It's, it's, it's stressful. Build. I mean, when you're getting to the point where you're starting the finishing stuff. Right. And it's now it's time that all the plans have to work. Right. Um, that's when things get really stressful. Speaking of stressful, Brian, what was your, uh, the time you were not having the goodest of time. Cause we're, one thing about Rick Bike Rebuild is like, we're a show and all, but we try very hard to bring you guys along with it as it is. We're not, we don't script our shit out. We, it, whatever happens, happens. So when you see us pissed off in an episode, that's because whatever we're doing is like, it, like we don't act. 
I act a little bit because like when the camera turns on, I get loud. But like other than that, <laughs> we everything is real. So what part of the season were you like, I hate everything going on? Oh, you, you're you shaking. So I'm assuming you have a very specific time stamp. That moment when we pulled the clutch apart. Really? That was, was your like, oh. Because I knew at that point we were already getting short on time. Right. And we were already planning on working multiple days in a row. Yeah. And then we get to the point where it's like... We needed stuff to get right. We need to add 10 more hours of solid labor onto this build. Right. Just to get the motor apart and back together. Fair enough. So, um, and then, you know, there's the part where it's like we're under a time crunch. Right. We need to make sure that we get all the parts that we absolutely need for this engine before we put it back together again. Yep. And the stress of going through and trying to make sure that we don't miss any parts uh, to elongate the build. <clears throat> right. Um, that was probably the toughest moment for me. The point at which I was the most worried, because that was a huge point. Mm -hmm. Like the clutch thing was like, I was looking at your face like, Oh, we're screwed. This is not good. I try so hard to not show it as to not stress you guys. But when you're in a situation like that, it's, there is, there's no way yeah. to avoid it. But so that was a bad point. But I honestly think the, the point I had the most stress was when uh, we had put everything back together because we had already dealt with so many issues with like uh, balancing the rear wheel, like getting it centered, getting it centered. and have the engine being, having to blown apart at the very end of it, like all of that stuff had happened. So I had, I was prepped up for terrible things to happen. And then the episode where we got the engine in, put everything in just as much as we had to, to crank the bike up, the moments before the bike cranked were probably the most stressful because we had taken the entire engine apart. Like the entire lift was full of engine parts put the whole thing back together. I had never seen that be done. So I was like, I don't know what the hell's oh. happening. <laughs> and so in my head, it's like, okay, so all this stuff, all this bad stuff's happening. We just put the engine back apart or put together. We put the whole bike back together into like a roller and then we go to crank it up and I'm sitting there thinking in my head, like we've had a bad spot happen every single way of this build. It, it might as well happen here. So I was like, if this happens bad, the engine doesn't crank up. Where, what happens now? Because we were already under the super time crunch over the time crunch. Because I was like, if the engine doesn't start, I don't know what we're going to do. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it, it was the point of no return. We're like, if that engine doesn't crank up, okie dokie. I was expecting you to take that a little bit better because I was so positive about it. That is probably the only thing that made it so I wasn't like curled up inside the bucket of oil and gasoline. Yeah. I'd probably just like lit myself on fire and just rolled down the street or something. But yeah, the uh, but you seemed super confident when uh, we were cranking it up and you seemed like it wasn't a big deal. So that was like, Brian don't look like it's a big deal. So like, maybe there's a chance it won't. I can tell you now that I was a little concerned. Damn it, Brian, don't tell me <laughs> something like that. Cause then when we work on the next bike or whatever next bike we do, we're, we're gonna have to take an engine apart. I'm gonna be like, see, I remember season three. Well, and don't worry, Chase, the next time we do a motor, you're doing it. Then you'll really be stressed. Oh God, I don't even wanna think about that. All right, Luke, what was your most uh, terrifying part? I have an idea of what yours might be. The whole thing? <laughs> Is that no, right? you have to pick one specific part where you're like, you were the most worried about the build in general. Um, I think it all started when we like rolled it on the lift. Really? Yeah, I mean, day one, dude. Like everything's, you know, like ordering $3,500 wheels and like, God, they're gonna work, you know? <laughs> like they don't make, they don't, the company that we use for it doesn't make wheels specifically for what we have. They right. had done a build in like 2007 or something like that and they said that it should, and then it's like, make it work, you know? Well, that's an issue that came up a lot where, you know, if you're, if you're building a bike and you're just upgrading parts and people have done it in the past or it's a popular bike to transform that way, then you have companies that specialize and make the parts. But it turns out that there just are not a lot of V-Star 1300 bobbers out. Because I think the wheels were for a, 1800 right like the the 17 17 yeah that's yep. that's it, it yeah. was for a road and then we lucked out with the triple trees and i think that transformed it a lot right it's like there was actually a company that makes a specific you know machine set for it 
the triple trees are something we really looked at on and our luckiest thing of the entire build was our mechanic or our not mechanic the uh machinist right down the road if we wouldn't have had him and, and that's why it was so stressful is because like everything is it's moving parts and it's like you know i'm planning 10 months out for right. a complete build and you got to think of every little aspect and yeah having you know the um he, he filled in all the tiny little yeah. gaps that we would have fallen in and never been able to exactly <laughs> yeah up. like i didn't know a solution to it so there would not have been any way to get that done except for finding a machinist so we would have had to find a machinist regardless. Period. The bike runs and we have not ran it yet. Obviously we were looking at the brake lines well, that we, our banjo We ran it, we didn't into. ride it. Right, we haven't like rode it. So we will be making a video of it on the street. Brian is gonna have the ceremonial first ride of the bike so I can- First um, ride, first burnout. Oh so boy. We have a dope paint job which that's a thing. Thank you, LJ. Thank you, LJ. LJ did a phenomenal job. So if you guys haven't seen that episode, we flew Brian's buddy LJ down from New Jersey mm -hmm. and uh, he did all the painting on this tank here. Like tank, fender, side covers. All of that. All the graphics. Worked absolute magic. You know, down to a finished product, wet sand, buffed and ready to be installed. Right, nuts. Dude's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, and what was the time frame? Three days. Yeah. And it's not just paint, it's right. there's design. Yeah, so yes. that, that's a good point. And we, it was body work. There were some, you know, dents and scratches that needed to be covered oh up as well. Oh my god, yeah. Yeah. So So three day time frame did this paint job, not in his shop, not like away from everything. Here. Yeah. You know, here. Did it here in a different environment than he would normally work. We're using a terrible um, air compressor that with we only want. a handful of his own tools and the rest of it was yours and trying to do stuff like this when you're not you don't have your own tools in your own space is a difficult task yeah and uh, i really do think he knocked it out of the park yeah i do too i'm really happy with it and unintentionally right click rebuild every season like season two we had we did the frame swap season one was relatively minimal with like a crankcase cover or something broke but it has massively escalated yeah each time we're hoping season four that doesn't happen yeah, so we were trying to bring the escalation down and, and bring you more of a uh, more of a yeah. a beautiful machine with right. less labor involved to make it that beautiful. I wonder if it's going to be season one, two, three is escalation. Four goes back to one, two, five three. is in the middle, and then six we're like. Well, when when is it that uh? I was dedicated to my craft. All right, I was throwing this hat. We will run into this amount of work again when we do a cafe. I was about to say, cafe. Which is probably, I mean, around season six, we'll probably yeah, looking. Probably somewhere around there. All right, guys, any last things about the old bobber build? Wow. I'm really, really happy with our finished product, but I think we did a really, really good job of mixing the feel of a bobber right and the forward how i put this uh all the technology that's around today right into a stripped down bobber yeah i that like the whole, with a bobber being supposed to be the stripped down minimal thing like the idea of a futuristic minimal bobber was like like that was in its dna from the time we got it that's the direction like I definitely wanted it to go, and I feel like we did a really good job with that. I feel we, it has like a futuristic feel with all the... And we started with the right bike. We did. We got very, very lucky with being able to take this big clunker of a cruiser and really, really trim it down to like fighting weight. Yeah, it, <laughs> fighting weight. So yeah, guys, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's it. I am uh, very, very looking forward to riding this bike. I, I think it's. Uh, I think it's gonna be a great ride. Um, I look I, forward to filming you riding this bike. It's definitely going to make more power than it did before. Mm -hmm. It's definitely louder than it was before. And it's lighter. And it's way lighter than it way was before. Lighter. I mean, honestly, 
that box is what we've taken off of this. We've really nothing that we've added back on. That doesn't even have the giant seat that there was, and now there's like the little teeny seat. I don't even think it has the section of subframe that we cut off of it in there either. I think that stuff went straight to the garbage. Oh shit, it did. So you there's know, even more weight. Yeah, like I mean, way more weight. that subframe alone was probably 10 pounds. Yeah, it's ridiculous. We cut a lot of weight off, but that's one of the main things about the bobber is you hack off what you don't need so guys that is the uh that's the bobber we still got the first try coming up but uh that's gonna be after we got a lot of titling crap that i gotta deal with um and at that point brian will get to do the ceremonial first ride and i will do my first drive video so we've got a couple videos with this bike still left to do but it's going to be in the garage in the corner while all the legal stuff happens while we charge on into uh season four of wreck bike rebuild uh, we really appreciate you guys. Even if you're just watching and you haven't gone and checked out the Patreon page and like financially support it, just watching the show does a huge deal for us. So we massively appreciate all the uh, support we get from you guys. We really enjoy doing this show and we wouldn't be able to do it without you. So if you guys want to check out the Patreon page and see what the next bike is, you guys can go over there. There'll be a top link in the description. I think that's all I got. You guys got anything? No, I think I'm good. Brian's good. Luke, I'm you good? I'm good. All right, guys. Uh, outro crew, what was your favorite episode of this season? Let us know in the comments down below, outro crew. You guys are awesome. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. On the next season. On the next season. Woo!